Hello, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to the September Argos CD and Rollout Community Meeting. My name is Jesse Suen, and I am an engineer and maintainer of the Argo project. And uh, today we have a guest, Hong Sai. He'll be talking to us about uh, Karmada and how it works with Argo CD. And then um, after that, I'll give an update on the upcoming Argo rollout um, 1.1 release um, and just go uh, an overview over the, any of the, the new features that are coming in. Um, just a reminder that these meetings are being recorded to the cloud. So everything you say will be uploaded to YouTube later. Um, and with that, Hong Sai, are you ready to present? Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Hong Tai Ren from China. Um, I'm, I'm the maintainer of the Kamada project. Um, the reason why I'm here is a friend of mine who uh, who using Argo CD to distribute uh, uh, applications to multi clusters. And uh, luckily, uh, he is also a uh, Kamada user, uh, she, uh, he, he, said, he told me that uh, Kamada and uh, Argo CD works together uh, pretty good. So uh, I run a demo and I want to share with, uh, with the Argo CD guys. Um, now, um, can I share the screen? Yes, uh, please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's the, have you used this software before? It's on the bottom, there's a share screen. Oh, okay. um, yeah. Now. There you go. Okay. Okay, yeah, we can see uh, your desktop now. Um, uh, before the demo, I, I want to make a brief uh, introduction uh, of the Kamada project. Uh, the Kamada project is a mod cluster uh, federation uh, project. Uh, he provides the uh, application man management in multi cloud and uh, hybrid cloud scenarios. And uh, okay, let's let's see the architecture here. Uh, Kamada control plane, control plane uh, includes uh, uh, API server. This API server is essentially a um, group API server and uh, uh, is uh, a, a lot of uh, controllers. Um, okay, uh, Kamada control plane uh, usually installed in a cluster. We 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 said uh, the host cluster. Now let's uh, let's see uh, the environment I prepared. Can you can can, can you see the the terminal? Yes. Yeah. Uh, here I have uh, three. I have three clusters, and uh, the the Argo CD uh, is a cluster uh, that I run the Argo CD server, mm, and uh, the the host cluster is the mm, I installed the Kamada control plane on on this cluster uh, with the the Kamada API server is the uh, is a uh, is here now? Um, okay. Uh, the demo 
uh, basically runs uh, very similar with with this one with uh, sorry yeah yeah very similar with this one so uh, let's see the cluster uh, I replace the Kamada API server here and uh, uh, in this document uh, we, we we know here uh, we know uh, yeah, I I fork the, this repo and uh, no, sorry here. I focus here and um, uh, make a small change on it. Uh, from here, you can see all the changes I made. Uh, update the replicas to three and uh, add added a propagation policy API. That's the Kamala API. Uh, from the API, we can see that. Uh, uh, Select the deployment and the service, and place them to uh, three clusters. And there is a, a scheduling scheduling rule. Uh, according to the rule, the replicas will be divided according to a weight list. And uh, from the list, we can see. Uh, three cluster uh, all have a uh, weight one. That means the three replicas will be uh, deployment uh, to three cluster, and each cluster has one rep replica. Um, okay, uh, I think uh, I can run. Yeah, the uh, let's delete the book. Okay, let's start. Book. Book. Mm, uh, this uh. Sorry. Select the Kamada demo. Okay, the destination is the, I, I would like to select the Kamada API server. And namespace before. Okay. Now the application is uh, uh, created. Uh, let's think it. Okay. Now you can see uh, a deployment uh, has been propagated to three clusters. And uh, you can see from here. Uh, uh, this this policy is I I I I just showed uh, here, uh, and uh, from uh, this uh, this is the resource funding API. Uh, from this uh, it's a uh, internal API, and uh, you can see. Uh, here, the the deployment has been the deployment has been applied to three clusters, and uh, you can see the uh, status from here. Yeah. Um, 
actually we have uh, uh, another API that didn't uh, showing here because uh, uh, the, the object uh, uh, in another namespace, another relationship not uh, not defined by owner reference. So um, from the deployment, you can see the health state is healthy. Yeah, the status, uh, the, here is a, a simple status. Can I ask a question? Okay. Um, so uh, I know this in the resource tree, I don't see replica set under the deployment. Is that just hidden or the, were you able to somehow prevent that from happening? Uh, so, sorry? So normally when you create a deployment, that deployment then goes creates replica sets and then the replica set creates the pods. Here mm -hmm. we see the deployment only having a resource binding underneath. Um, so it somehow it didn't create the replica set. How did you um, change that behavior? Yeah. Uh, okay, here. Mm -hmm. um, we use re, we reused uh, 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 Kubo API server as the Kamada API server, but uh, uh, the controllers is very limited. From here, uh, you can see. Yeah. Oh, I understand. So you, um, so the Kamada API server masquerades as a real deployment server, but really it's the, uh, when it handles deployment objects, it goes then and distributes that to other yeah. clusters. Okay. That's pretty clever. Cool. Yeah. Um, my friend said, uh, they, uh, uh, before the uh, uh, when the application propagated to uh, thousands of cluster, uh, they will be they will uh, create uh, many applications here, and uh, with Kamala, uh, they only need to create one. This uh, looks uh, um, pretty, I think. Okay, any question? Uh, this is this is really cool. Did, um, does this support any other workload types aside from deployments? Uh, do, do you mean support other workloads? Yeah, or other resource kinds. Like, um, does yeah. it, can it propagate things like, I don't know, um, stable sets or? Yes. Um, I said before the the command API server essentially a Kube API server. So uh, if the uh, uh, mm, all the service all the uh, all the results will be supported, and um, here the result selector you can uh, specify specific the API version kind and the name. So um, no matter the Kubernetes resources, uh, all the uh, customer results uh, will all support it. Okay, so it's, it, it applies to even like CRDs, it, anything that you just need to um, propagate to many, many clusters. Yes. Okay. Yeah, this is this is really interesting. I never seen um, uh, something quite like this. Yeah, I have a question here. Uh, I see uh, uh, from uh, from here. I can I I can't get the house status of uh, uh, the 
uh, uh, resource funding. So I wonder if uh, if we can contribute uh, our uh, health check script here. Uh, yeah, actually, I was um, going to suggest to do that um, so that um, I noticed when you clicked on the, the resource finding, you know, it had health information about each individual subcluster. Um, and it would be useful in the UI to be able to say, okay, one of the clusters is not being somehow being able to propagate. And so the overall status of that resource finding is, you know, either progressing or degraded. Um, so, but you seem to have already uh, added the health check for the propagation policy, but not resource finding. Is that, or someone did, I guess. Uh, oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. That's not a health check. That's a, st uh, that's a sync status. Um, I thought, sorry, I took that back. So they, they are, yeah, there are no health checks for the um, Karmada CRDs. And the, um, the way you would go about um, uh, contributing them would be to submit a PR um, to the Argo CD repo with um, Lua scripts that are able to self-assess, uh, given a single resource, looking at its status and spec um, uh, to return a string that is either you know uh, healthy or degraded or progressing or suspended. Yeah. Um, okay. I. By the way, and then this is something we're trying to improve. So this this will likely change in the future to make this more. Um, uh, distributed and self like so in other words we're moving towards a model where um, individual projects can um, can self-manage their own health and extension concept so that they can write their own health check and then you just point Argo CD to a git repo containing those health checks and and um, and then Argo CD can just um, uh, present that information in the UI without having to upstream a health check to the Argo CD repo. Um, so, but for now, this is how you would do it. Okay. Uh, uh, do you think I I can send a PR for, for this? Are you asking me or um, someone? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. You can uh, submit a PR for okay. Karmada Health. Okay, I, I have um, uh, another question here. Mm -hmm. um, as we have another uh, resource, um, but uh, he uh, not in the namespace with uh, in the resource binding namespace. So uh, I can't. It can't be showing here. Oh, I see. And you, you, you're asking for a way. Is there? Is it possible to show things which are not um, owned by uh, the, the the tree of managed objects? If it's possible to show those in the Argo CD UI? Yes. Yes. Um, so there's two answers to that question. The first is um, Argo CD has the ability to show you everything in a namespace, um, regardless if it's managed in a, by a Git repo or not. Uh, but I think you just mentioned that you're, the object you're interested in is actually in a different namespace. Um, and so the first, my, my first answer won't help you because um, that feature that we already have won't allow you to see anything outside of the um, this guestbook namespace. Um, the second answer is there have been requests and I, there's already a, um, yeah, there's been issues opened about can I associate um, other resources which are not really owned by the object, but just make them a um, somehow a child of, mm -hmm. of it for display purposes. Um, this actually seems, uh, I think we're open to this. Sorry, this, you're saying something? Um, so we're, yeah, we're open to um, somehow allowing users to configure um, a 
child relationship to objects, even though they're not technically owned by them. In fact, we actually already do this with some uh, type of objects. Uh, the one in particular is um, a service always creates endpoints objects. Um, like it always creates one, but we make endpoints a child of service um, just because they live and die together. Like when you delete the service, then the endpoints object becomes deleted as well. Um, so there's a couple of native Kubernetes kinds that we already apply this kind of association with. Um, and um, we are open to showing um, or allowing opening that up to allow others to, to kind of create re relationships when they don't have um, ownership. Here is the, um, the catch. Um, if your thing is in a different namespace, the child resource, uh, there's some security things we would have to consider to, um, to kind of allow that presentation to happen. Uh, because um, if, if, you're, if you're an end user and somehow you can annotate your resources such that you can suddenly see stuff in another namespace that you're not supposed to, that would not be um, allowed. So we'd have to um, honor our project RBAC somehow to, to kind of show, to allow this to happen. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in, in other words, yes, we, we would um, be open to a feature that allows customization of the resource tree and relationships, so long as it honors project R, uh, project R back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that uh the arrow here is uh you you get the relation by the owner reference right um for in 95 percent of the cases yes mm. there there are like uh there are like maybe three exceptions or two or three exceptions to this um the service and endpoints is one exception i think the pvc created by stateful sets is a second exception um i can't think of a third okay I'm um but it won't help you in the immediate future because i think we would have to scope like um th this would kind of uh, be a midterm feature and we have to kind of spec out the design like what how how we think it sh we would allow users to control that like if this would be something a system administrator would configure um, or an end user, probably not an end user, but um, these are all the things that we have to consider. Okay. All right, any questions people have for Hong Sai? Is, is this something, um, are people uh, actually have, have this need for multi-cloud distribution of, um, actually it's more multi-cluster than multi-cloud, multi-cluster distribution of this, um, using a single deploy. I, I don't know if others have. Yeah, yes. A single uh, uh, yeah, that question was more for the audience to see if others would be interested. Um, where, where can people um, find out more about this um, through either like a Slack channel or if they have questions, how do they um, kind of get involved? Are you, are you asking me? Yeah, that, that question was for you. Um, if so, if anyone who's watching this video is like they're interested in this, um, how can they get um, more information or get involved? Um, we have uh, the Slack here. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, um, I think that's what I was wondering. Okay, I'm so, stop sharing now. All right, thanks, Hongsai, for that. Um, it's a really interesting project. I think it's really uh, creative how you were able to um, to accomplish that with just the native Kubernetes types. Yeah. Um, all right, so the next agenda item is a, um, it, it's not a demo, 
uh, but it's it's an overview of the upcoming rollouts um, uh, one up one features. Um, so we we have a quite a bit of uh, new features actually for a um, a one dot one release, and I wanted to just quick go over each one and explain um, what they're doing because it's it might be easier to learn about it through um, talking than than say a, a change change log. Oops. All right. So the first one is um, notification support. We actually already um, demoed this maybe two or three months back when it first got merged into the rollout code base. Uh, but if you're familiar with Argo CD notifications, uh, this should look really familiar. Um, we are we have native support that you don't have to run in a separate controller um, to get this. Um, Argo rollout one dot one controller. Um, understands these annotations that um, you can send um, uh, uh, notifications to, and it supports all of the notification providers uh, that the engine supports, like Slack and um, PagerDuty, email. Or, um, so you get all of those things out of the box, um, and you have the same exact configuration experience that you do with Argo CD notifications, um, just with the rollout inside the rollout namespace and um, controller. Um, so this will let you get uh, notifications on any Kubernetes event that we emit. Um, and the syntax is, um, uh, so if you know the event, um, uh, I guess the event, the event names, so it's like capital on capital rollout step completed. If you just, sorry, it's just, I sorry, it's rollout step completed. And if you add dashes between them and then the word on in front of it, then you will have like, um, you can you can notif notify on that particular event. So that's the uh, convention that you can get. Um, so that, that's the notification feature, I'll move on since uh, we already talked about that. Uh, the second feature is um, the ability to control scale down of your either your canary or your blue-green preview when the rollout is aborted. And um, we actually had this behavior um, already, but it was very, it was inconsistent. Um, so I think in blue-green, Right in blue green, we just left the preview up indefinitely, and there was actually not really any way you can say, "Okay, when I abort, scale down the the, the blue green preview." Um, so now um, we made this consistent across the board, um, except basic canary because basic canary you have to scale down um, when you're not using traffic shaping. But we made this consistent across the board, where um, by default, um, thirty seconds after an abort. It will, it will scale down um, the preview or the canary. And you can make this configurable. So you can say, if I don't want the default of 30, you know, make it an hour or a day. Or if I, don't, if I want to leave it up indefinitely, um, you can specify the value of zero, um, which is different than, than omitting it completely. But the value zero means like, don't scale it up, uh, down at all. Just leave it up forever. Um, that's the scale down delay seconds. Uh, the second feature is um, the ability to abort without using analysis. Um, uh, so as you know, a, a rollout is like a deployment and it, it needs to pro make a progress within a 10 minute by default window before um, it's considered degraded. So then the feature that's here is that at that time when it exceeds that deadline seconds, um, you can choose to actually abort the rollout. And you don't even need to be using analysis uh, to, um, to do that. Previously, the only way to get automated aborts was to, um, to have an analysis run that failed. Uh, but here, we can now allow uh, progress deadline seconds to um, abort the rollout. Um, uh, in fact, this is actually, if, um, as I noticed in the Kubernetes uh, upstream issues there's been like an open issue for a feature like this for like those uh, for years uh, but they 
Uh, this is now something that's available in rollouts. Um, we announced this in GC. So um, previously, garbage collection of old analysis runs was um, tied to the um, uh, revision history limit. Uh, so in other words, like in 1.0, if you had a revision limit of um, 10, which is the default, we would leave around all analysis runs and experiments and um, uh, all those things around of, as, associated with that replica set. Um, and that just created just this massive page of objects to look at when you're you know looking at your app in Argo CD or in kubectl. And so this is some knobs that we are now giving to um, let people control how much do they really want to see. You know, if I don't want to see any successful stuff, I can just delete them right after they complete. And if I want, I can only just keep like the stuff that failed or vice versa. Um, and so these are some knobs that make things a lot um, cleaner. Um, oh yeah, so this this is uh, our AWS target group verification. If you are using EKS and along with the AWS CNI and you're using um, AWS load balancer controller, uh, that you may be interested in this feature. Um, here, there's a problem that the um, AWS um, load balancer controller has based on, uh, on, on the way it was implemented in that if you change this, uh, the, layer, the service selectors of, of something, um, pod readiness gates don't properly get injected um, to the, um, the pods. In fact, this is impossible. Kubernetes makes this impossible because uh, pod readiness gates are immutable. Um, so this actually, this causes a problem because if a blue rollout, it work, like blue green, it works by changing the active service um, selectors to point from the blue to the green on every update. And what that ultimately means is that we're changing the, um, the service from underneath the ALB and they are not getting um, uh, target uh, readiness gates injected into the, um, the pods. So, and, and readiness gates help with the, um, the zero downtime. So, in order to allow us to have this, this model of switching service selectors um, uh, from underneath the ALB, uh, we implemented this verification feature in uh, specifically for AWS, where whenever we change selectors of uh, services as part of an update, we, we stop there and we then go verify in AWS by making um, AWS API calls to make sure all of the the services endpoints are properly registered into that corresponding target group. Um, so th th it's a um, it's a complicated subject. So I, I I wrote a lot of documentation as well as there's some slides that you can see to to visualize how this works. Um, but uh, it's important if you're using blue green on on um, AWS using the AWS CNI that, and IP targeting. Um, all right, next, uh, CloudWatch. Um, this is still in review, but it's, it's, it's very likely going to get merged in the next um, week or so. Um, we are now supporting CloudWatch as a uh, metric provider. And so if you have an analysis template, you'll, you can now have this stanza here where um, you can specify. This is the same query format that um, uh, that is available in the APIs. Uh, so you can fill this in. It should be no different than what you're used to writing if you ever wrote CloudWatch um, queries. Uh, uh, so that's coming. Uh, Next, we have experimentation steps um, with traffic routing. And so it, previously in 1.0, you can launch experiments. Um, but if you were using traffic splitting, um, 
we didn't let you split traffic n ways. It was always split between uh, the canary and the stable. Um, but there's a use case where you actually want to launch an experiment with n templates um, and you want to give them equal weights because um, your, your statistical analysis can't be um, performed unless they are apples to apples. Um, uh, so that it, it's, in other words, uh, people weren't able to compare like a 5% canary against a 95% stable because the metrics would just be all out of whack, right? Um, so that's why you actually want to use experimentation. And now with 1.1, um, you can use, you can leverage traffic splitting so that the weights, you can specify the weights to that, um, those uh, experiment templates. So, so if you see here, when we get to this step, we'll send five to this, this canary, five to this baseline, and then 90% to the stable. Um, and if we had a set weight step before this, like it would, like let's say we had um, a canary weight of like uh, of 15, and then 15 would go to the canary, five would go to this thing, which we are also calling canary right now. Um, and then five to baseline and the 75% would go to stable. Um, uh, and initial support we'll have is with ALB and SMI, but um, it should be trivial to add support for other traffic providers. Um, oh yeah, so dynamic scaling. This is this was one of our most popular requests. Um, and if you're using canary with traffic shaping, you'll know, um, currently you'll understand that we leave the stable scaled up the, for the entire duration of the update. And then once the update is complete, we scaled down um, the stable. And the reason we, we chose to do that was we wanted the boards to be immediate. So if without, if you leave this, if you scale down the stable, um, that means when you board, you have to scale up the stable and that can take, um, a lot of time. So um, this this feature is basically saying, as I increase weight to um, the canary, um, you can uh, you allow the rollout controller to scale down the stable to be the inverse of the canary uh, weight. Um, and this way, this is important for scenarios like maybe you have a bare metal setup where you can't. Um, you know, increase the node size of your thing because it's, it's physical hardware. Um, you'll want this feature because your, your replica will always be very be close or uh, matching this, this number right here. Uh, let's see, is there anything? There? Okay, and I think this is the last one that's quick coming question up. On that. Yeah. Uh, sorry, quick question on that last one. Uh, so that PR looks like a draft PR at present. Is that for sure gonna be in 1.1? Yeah, uh, awesome. it, yeah. This the draft. Um, I, I need. I didn't take it out of the draft because I I need to write um, a lot of more testing for it. But actually, I I I can probably take it out of the draft so people can start looking at the um, the functional stuff. And because the only thing really that's left is to write the um, uh, the end to end tests and, and unit tests for this. All right. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Just. By way of example, my team definitely will take advantage of this because we have cloud-based deployments, but we'll soon have a hybrid model where we have on-premise mm -hmm. deployments as well. And we were thinking we were going to have to disable rollouts for the on-prem deployments, but with this, we won't. Okay. Great. Thanks for yeah. your work. And um, I think if you wanted to get like um, early access, like this, as soon as this is merged, we always build latest um, from from the tip of the, the main branch. Um, and you'll be able to just retag that in your environment and, and try it out early before um, 1.1 is coming. Oh, by the way, I think with 1.1, I, we're, I would, we're trying to get it out hopefully in the next two weeks. Um, I think we might, I think we're on track for that. Um, there are some PRs, um, both external and internal that we're still working towards, but um, it still seems doable. Great. Thanks for that. Yeah.
Um, and I think this is the last one. Um, there's been a lot of improvements to Istio support. Um, the first is uh, in one notch area, we only had support for Istio with um, uh, HTTP routes. And with one notch one, we just were adding support for TLS routes. And so with TLS, um, if you specify either a port number or an SNI host, um, we'll find that uh, TLS route in the Istio virtual service, and then we'll um, split, we'll modify it such that it splits traffic um, uh, be between your TLS routes. Um, and then the second improvement that is made with regards to Istio is that um, it's, it seems to be very common to want to, to manage multiple virtual services um, for the uh, for the same um, application in, um, in in locks up, and um, the the feature that this allows is that you can now provide virtual services as a list, and and specify multiple virtual services, and then we'll, the rollout controller will go and um, modify you know two three four virtual services and 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 make sure the canary weighting is um, uh, equal across the board. Uh, and I think that's, yeah, that, that's uh, the end of the features, upcoming features. Um, oh, let me look at, I see some questions. Oh, no, OK, it's just um, Hong Sai going to sleep. So. I'll open it up to the audience for any questions about these upcoming features. All right. Um, if there are no questions, um, let me check if there is anything else added to the agenda. Um, all right, I don't see anything else in the agenda, um, but that isn't to mean that you can't ask any questions um, here. Uh, so we have a lot of the maintainers on, and if you, you know, want to raise any issues, um, talk about you know, features or requests. Then now's your time. Oh, uh, I don't. I don't have a, a ask. Is I think I I, I helped uh, and worked with three new contributors recently. And they all had some like two chain setup problem for Argo CD, uh, for mm -hmm. example. So I, I just don't know whether the, our documentation is up to date because it's happened three times. Even myself, I cannot uh, install that. Uh, I think for the UI development, I cannot install, install that properly uh, following that instruction. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering who did recently can help to maybe refresh the doc to reflect the current state. So Hong, is this for uh, uh, rollouts or uh, CD? CD. Okay, CD. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Probably, I think we need to. Can you see, can you actually maybe raise an issue or something? We will uh, take a look at it. Sure. Yeah. yeah I I think um, yeah. what well, usually uh, is like the most efficient. I I guess you can say. Um, the person, the, the last person to onboard notices mistakes or, or think incorrect information in the um, or missing information is most of the time. If they if they encounter all of that stuff, they uh, they they have to power through it somehow, and um, that may involve slacking the um, inside the the contributor channel or, or stuff. And then once they actually power through it, they they should. Uh, to benefit the next person following them, they should go and make a PR with the doc changes necessary to um, to get it. But uh, I would say uh, we should uh, first um, help that person get through that so that they can um, then take the action to update the documentation. Because I don't think the people who've been regularly doing this day to day will actually be the best people to actually update the docs because they they um, don't have the same um, barriers that they will encounter as, as a new contributor. 
Yeah, then could I ask one volunteer who actually did recently and uh, quite successfully, so I can connect with one new new contributor. Basically, he asked me a lot of questions and a lot of things I don't even have answer. Uh, then I can ask this new contributor actually help us to refresh the bug. Um, I don't know who can volunteer to spare some time uh, with, with this guy. Oh, maybe. Let's, let's uh, take it um, off the mind. I think I think we'll have to uh, maybe uh, reach out individually or something. Okay, so we may put into that uh, Slack channel. So hopefully, like who had the experience can answer those questions. Okay. All right. Um... If there are no other agenda times, we give you 10 minutes of your day back and uh, we can end the meeting. I actually oh. have a, sorry, I have a, one more question here uh, about issue number 958. Uh, I can put it in the chat here. 958, you said? Yep. Um, so you had made a comment in here about creating a, a a controller that would monitor the config maps and secrets. Um, is there any, has there been any other thought towards this? Um, is this a possibility for a future release? Or would you be looking for uh, someone else to create the PR to do this? Um, so my first uh, question is, uh, so I, I actually followed, I subscribed to the issue that I think it got merged already. Um, they, they actually um, improved their support recently for roll, um, rollouts. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I would say to, you can actually try this today because I think that um, this, this project has now better support for it um, since, since this when, since my last comment, um, I, I did observe that they, um, they updated to support the newer rollout version. So my question is, uh, is it, would that satisfy your use case and why not? Um, I mean, it, it mostly satisfies it. I think the, the biggest remaining issue is just as an, also as an Argo CD user, the config diffs are, are effectively not usable. Um, right, which, so there- You know, so I mean, yeah. it's, it's a nice to have, is it a deal breaker? Probably not, but it would definitely be a nice to have. As an Argo CD user, yes, the the config diff um, is actually something we would like to solve. So um, the problem you described the config diff. So anyone who's using customize and using their config map generator feature will know that it deploys new resources and prunes old. Like if you, that's kind of just the model um, customize has with regards to uh, config management. Um, so regardless if you're using deployments or um, rollouts or um, say full sets or anything that needs a config map, um, that you have that problem in Argo CD and we want to solve that problem. So um, I think, you know, if we, if we were to only do that in rollouts, it would not help our deployment users who are using customizing config map generators. Um, but the, the idea that I think is being investigated is like can Argo CD diff across resources and also uh, maybe have some convenience in the UI to just understand these relationships and you know provide um, that uh, a, a good user experience to understand like okay these config maps are really one of the like the same thing and I can just click on the um, cross resource diff button to, to understand what what's really different. Um, yeah, so in other words, we, we want to solve that diffing problem, but and we want to solve it in Argo CD. And uh, there's a, I think there's a way um, to, to kind of have our cake and eat it too. Sure. Do you, do you have a know off the top of your head? I'll, I'll go looking for it if you don't know, but do you know if there's an Argo CD issue that? Uh, I 
think there was. All right, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go oh. looking for it then if you think okay. that there is. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. And and let me know if there, this, this uh, reloader, if, um, you know, if, if someone has experience with this and they tried it out and it's not really, um, doesn't really work the way they want it to. Like at that point, I think we should investigate if it's um, worth either kind of improving reloader or, or and um, throwing our hands up and say, okay, we need this native uh, support in, in rollouts. But um, my, my preference is to kind of, um, to kind of improve this uh, rather than bacon support, because I think really what we're, um, but the, the use, difference in user experience would be just putting something in an annot pod annotation versus, I mean, an annotation on the rollout versus something in like the spec. And to me, that's not a big enough difference to um, to go and, and implement and, and redo some uh, feature when when this this project may already be doing what we want. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for um, raising that issue. Anything else? This is open to everyone. All right. Um, so thanks everyone for uh, joining this month's meeting. And um, a reminder, we'll have the workflow and events meeting in, the, in two weeks from today. Thanks everyone. Thanks.